right, so this is Generac. This is one of their, what I call the first generations. Problem with this mo uh, monster here is it has no choke on it. This is also the one that has all kinds of issues with the fuel regulator back here that has a tendency not to work right and stick. And so today we end up having to come here and replace the battery. So change the battery and lo and behold, this is what always seems to happen. There's always more to it. So it ran for a while the first time, and now we got a over speed flashing green, flashing red, uh, over speed blink. I'll have to look to see what that is. I forget. We're going to check the frequency and voltage. So get in there and see what we got going on and see if our frequency is truly over or if it's just another false alarm and a control board's bad or this shoddy governor stuff here they got it's all manual the thing had issues the springs get loose they get tight they fall off there's just so many issues with these old ones that i uh i've had so many issues with this this is the ones i started out on back in 06 you know it sounds negative but i've just i've seen too many problems with these and it just never seems to go away I'm going to say the voltage regulator is probably out. Now we'll probably have frequency. Yep, we got frequency but no voltage. No voltage and that wasn't even an option. So I about bet you anything we pop this top and uh, we'll not have a red light on the voltage regulator, which was another thing that failed all the time on these. They uh, originally didn't give you a bolt for this uh, disconnect box looking junction box kids could get in there and get the get, get electrocuted and then you can see the so-called professional installation here last time i checked i don't think that's proof for outside use but you know what do i know okay watch this led on the voltage regulator here see if it lights up bet you it don't Uh, there's a fixed excitation winding test that you got to do, which I'll go ahead and do for giggles, but it should show us that the uh, voltage regulator is junk. The other issue we got too with these old ones is the voltage uh, out of the battery charger here is very, very aggressive, which will blow the batteries up if they get slightly low on water. The reason why they go low on water is because it overcharges them. It's not true trickle charger, so that was another issue they had. Uh, another thing they did that was kind of stupid. Um, this dual uh, voltage transformer here, this powered the battery charger. So instead of having it all integrated into one thing, they powered a transformer that powered the battery charger. Anyhow, let's go ahead and do the fixed excitation here real quick and we'll condemn it. All right, so we just got done doing our fixed excitation winding test here and basically our voltages and amperages, whether or not what it's doing when you send a positive 12 volts to the uh, stator. And uh, what we're coming up with is got to be determined yet because I got to look at the chart. So let's take a look here and see what we got. We got model number 4456. So we look through here, 4456. So let's just continue looking across here as we find what we need. So we went ahead and finished it up there, disconnecting some terminals back here, isolating the uh, other side of the uh, stator and uh, slip rings and all that happened. When it's all said and done, we do have. Uh, flash voltage going to our slip rings, uh, or should to say going to the voltage regulator. So the voltage regulator is bad, um, which I kind of presumed was the case, but since uh, I wanted to be 100% certain, because you can't return parts like electrical stuff, uh, I wanted to make dang sure. So, yep, it's bad. That's what's wrong with this thing. So they're going to need a new voltage regulator. Bad battery, bad voltage regulator. Uh, when we get done, uh, it should run fine. We had like 103 volts uh, on average coming out of the generator when uh, I did my test. So it does generate voltage when there is a fixed voltage going into the stator or into the rotor, creating the magnetic field. All right, so we're back again. We got the voltage regulator here, which we're going to get that installed. <clears throat> this is kind of a 
easy but a pain in the butt thing to have to do. You gotta get those screws out of there and just swap the wires out. Generally these come tuned all the way down, so you gotta make sure you adjust the voltage to it. That way it's uh, set correctly. And then we'll check all the other things too, as far as frequency and all that, because this is an old fashioned one that has a mechanical governor that uh, can uh, get loose and then the frequency gets out of whack. Things have changed quite a bit since this thing was built. The problem is it's so expensive to get rid of it just because all the technologies change, it's hard to justify it. There we go. And we'll go ahead and put a date on that so we know for later. We're going to go ahead and get this thing set up here. Go ahead and get her started and then we're going to tune it in. Usually somewhere at around 243 to 249 volts, but I usually shoot for about 243 to 246 area. So let's go ahead and see if she runs and go from there. What's a little bothersome here is it didn't produce voltage at first, but then it did on the second go around. So I don't know what the story is on that, but uh, it kind of bothers me that we may have some issues. So I'm um, going to go ahead and do her again, see what we get. Really not impressed with this horse pucky here, so we're gonna change that out. I don't know why people are so lazy, they can't just change things, it's just ridiculous. Don't be one of those lazy guys, just leaves things lay. I kind of wonder what, what uh, other things around your house look like if that's the way you leave your work. All right, so we got that mounted in there. It was a Phillips screwdriver, a little small one. Just loosen that up and put it in there. So that's, that was all that was required for that. I think we've already done checked our oil here. Yep, we're good. It, uh, it's not a real great uh, color. It's really hard to see sometimes. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and check our battery, make sure it's charging like it should. Give that another look. So let's go to DC volts. 13.84 looks to me like it's working start it up Starts up and seems to work now. I don't believe they're home So only thing we can do now To test the transfer switch is to unplug the harness and uh, see if it starts up which This right here is the reason why they got rid of this design because right now if you used to grab a hold of that and it was running it shocked the crap out of you but these are your wires that uh, go to the transfer switch two of them go to the transfer switch two of them are the power wires that tell the generator to start up and run 
So we'll go ahead and pull these apart. Alright, so the battery was bad, the voltage regulator was bad, now it doesn't transfer back. So next we've got voltage. Alright, we verified that it has DC voltage going to the transfer switch to switch it back, but obviously it didn't switch. So, we have to go down there, they probably have a relay out on that. Alright, so we have the 12 volt DC coming down, but they actually switched the ground. So, I have an issue with our relay. Mm hmm. Gotta love it. All right, so we're back again for the third time because we needed parts every time. So we've got a new um, board here. We're gonna replace this one. I've got the fuse pulled, got everything turned off. Um, technically, you probably should go ahead and unhook the battery and uh, get it completely shut down. That way everything's safe to go. You know, once again, guys, I'm not doing this for homeowners. I'm doing it for guys that are in the generator classes and stuff that have issues or just are curious. This is not intended for you guys to do the work yourself. You know, I can't, uh, I don't want any liability for you guys doing anything that causes damage or death or whatever. So, all right, so we've made sure that our dip switches are all set the same as what the original board was. Looks like they've made a few updates to it, a different chip. Got rid of some of these old IC chips, went to some newer uh, surface mount stuff. Anyhow, like I said, this one here has got a um, issue, I think, in the logic circuit. Looks like 2004 right there. So we've got the board in there. We're gonna go ahead and get it put back into place and test this thing out. Go ahead and put our system fuse back in. Should blink all together. If you put on auto, which it's doing, it's because it lost the uh, exercise date. So when we end up putting this into uh, set exercise and hold it for 10 seconds, it's gonna tell that right now, next week at this time, it's going to do its test. So let's go ahead and get some of these things off of the generator and run it through that, make sure it kicks on. Hopefully, you know, this time it actually produces voltage. That board is in charge of doing flash voltage to the um, rotor. Uh, I misspoke on another spot in the video, so I'll have to fix that, or basically this is your disclaimer to tell you that, yeah, I misspoke. Pulling all this crap out of your head without, you know, a uh, script or anything ain't always the easiest thing in the world. You're going to make some uh, mistakes on what you say. So I just am sharing what I got here and what I've found over the years, just because they can be very um, much a pain in the butt in the beginning, beginning years. Um trying to figure out all their fl uh, flukes and flaws and everything else. So when this thing starts up, we should see that red LED light on the voltage regular kick on and uh, should uh, see they quit blinking. Uh -huh. Okay, let's try it one more time. Then we're gonna go in, we'll trip the uh, breaker to the transfer panel. You gotta make sure that that breaker is on or it won't transfer over. Okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and see if it does it manual. All right, very good. Let's go ahead and put it in auto, go downstairs and we'll trip the uh, transfer switch, make sure it switches over and then we'll make sure it switches back. All right, so it kicked right on. We're going to flip it back and we'll see if it transfers back. Should be able to hear the click. All right, so we're still waiting for it to transfer back. So it's still running, obviously. Let's see what we got out here. It knows it's got power because it's not blinking. All right, so we're on generator. 
right now. Pulled the fuse out and energized our relay here. Pulled shut. This is dangerous. Don't be playing in here unless you know what you're doing and you've been trained by Generac. Um, I don't want to be responsible for you guys blowing your fingers off or blowing something up, killing yourselves, whatever the case. There's your disclaimer. So, um, what it is is this relay is powered with 12 volts DC when it is supposed to transfer over to the generator. <clears throat> so, we come down here to between the two of them, you got 13.6 volts. So, when we put that fuse back in, she should switch back. It should re remove the ground wire from 23 and these should relax. My relay's sticking. I wanted one of these, but unfortunately, even though they've only had two that I know of with this particular switch, they needed that flipping part number up there. They couldn't help us out. Let's put it back together and see what we get. And it worked. So that piece of trash was sticking. Now, one problem I had originally was that control board controls my voltage going to my rotor, and it didn't produce voltage one time. So I think I got both things acting up. <clears throat> so I did switch over, I'll pull the fuse again, see if it energizes back. That uh, relay is basically just sticking for whatever reason. And it just switched back again. That's three times it's done perfectly fine. So that's really making it, <sighs> makes it really wonderful. So, it's just a freaking single pull double throw relay. Actually, double pull double throw relay, 12 volt coil. All right, that's where we're gonna have to wrap the video up because I didn't get all the last uh, shots of what I ended up doing. Essentially, what ended up happening, and I made a mistake there because I don't do the generators near like I used to, and I've mentioned that a million times. The way that transfer switch relay works, it's a constant 12 volts all the time. They switch the negative on and off from the control module in the generator itself. And when I was getting the negative voltage, it was playing with my mind because I completely forgot how it worked. And what it was doing was getting a stray voltage off of the control module. Uh, the relay definitely was bad. Now, if you remember what I said in the beginning there, it didn't produce voltage on the first start. That gave me reservations on the control module itself. So that's why I ended up ordering the control and the relay both kind of sounds like a parts changer but i knew the guy that owns this generator personally and i asked him what he wanted to do and he said look i have a basement it's going to cost me a lot of money if things fail i don't want to take a chance on it just order the parts i want it done right so he ended up choosing to do that that's why we went ahead and uh, did that um because i mean it's one of those things you know when it's truly an emergency and you lose power uh you really don't have second chances and you may not have that part if uh, the power goes out at midnight, you know what I'm saying? So uh, other than that, you know, everything else was by the book and worked as it was. So that ends this video. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch it this far. I appreciate each one of you that has subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Check us out on Facebook at HVACR Survival. Uh, basically for anything that is smaller that's not worth making into a video or pictures or where you have groups where you guys can ask each other questions and help each other out that's what the Facebook page is for other than that guys till next time we'll catch you on the next one <laughs>